Hello, everybody. My guest today is Ben Jaboe. He is the founder of Privy.com, a marketing automation platform used by over 20, uh, 250,000 marketers around the globe. He's worked with companies like Lisa, Hubble Contracts, Lifetime Fitness, The Ellen Show, Dr. Axe, and many more to rapidly accelerate e-commerce, conversions, and sales. Ben, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. Thanks All right. For having me. This is a hot space. Let's hear it. What do you guys do and how do you make money? Yeah, so uh, we found that in the small, mid-size uh, e-commerce market, uh, there was really a gap. Uh, so much of those marketers are focused on driving traffic to the site, uh, and then on automatic, you know, nurturing campaigns after conversion. But you know, if ninety-eight percent of the traffic's not converting, that was the opportunity that we found to build a really easy-to-use, quick time-to-value SaaS platform focused on converting more website traffic into leads and sales. Okay, got it. And what's the revenue model? Is it pure play SaaS or what? Um, yeah, it is. So, it, you know, we go to market through a freemium model, um, but, you know, it's basically a premium SaaS subscription based on, you know, the level of features that you need uh, in terms of targeting, coupon integration, uh, and certainly we have some scaling metrics based on traffic to the site. It's pure uh, play SaaS though. Yes. Okay. There's not like a, there's not like a transaction fee on sales driven if your tool's being used or things like that. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Great. And pure SaaS. And give me a, before I, I want to learn more about your backstory here, but before we do that, and I don't want to go down every customer cohort, but on average, what would you say customers pay you per month? Yeah, we have kind of two segments that we look at. We have a fully self-serve funnel. Uh, the average there is about 50 bucks a month. Okay. Um, and then we have kind of a product qualified inside sales driven uh, effort that's growing. That's about $300 a month. Okay, good. It's a little variety there. Uh, can you give me the revenue breakdown on those? What percent is coming from self-serve? What percent coming from the other one? Yeah. So, uh, right now, let's see, it's about, uh, 80% of the business is self-serve. We actually just brought on our first member of the sales team, um, about four months ago. So, uh, ramping quickly. Um, but already 20% of, of MRR is coming from direct inside efforts. And let's just keep going down that team path here for a second. What's total team size today? Uh, we're 20 today. We'll be 30 by the end of the year. Breakdown is 11 on the engineering team, uh, a handful of customer support, uh, small marketing team of three, and uh, one salesperson. But I can, growing up. I can always tell who's listened to the show before. You've listened, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm a big fan. All right, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So, okay, 20 people right now. And when did you launch the company? Um, we launched this product. We had a completely separate product that failed. Um, but we launched this product in January 15. Okay, wait, hold on. I got to tell me the thing that failed. What was it? Oh, man. we So, it's a long story. I'll make it short. We were focusing on uh, brick and mortar retail. Uh, giving them kind of a, a, a SaaS platform to help them track uh, which of their kind of online audience was actually walking into their store with phones using offers. Ooh. So this online, yeah, super cool. A yeah. bunch of techies get excited kind of group about on, it. Groupon-ish, living social, like about a hard to, hard to do the attribution thing. Exactly. And and just hard to sell into. So how much, how much money did you sink into that? Uh, about... Two million dollars. Okay, and how did you know? Like, it's always hard because entrepreneurs we have to be optimistic, so we always tell ourselves it'll get better next year. Let's keep pushing. It takes balls to say, you know what? We put two million in. We have to shut this thing down and move on. What prompted you to be able to do that? That's that's very, I mean, self aware. Uh, <laughs> that's really nice of you to say. Unless your um, bank account was at zero, that makes it easy, right? No, we we were we kind of had a suspicion that this was going to be a slog, so we had. Uh, two M and A offers on the table, um, more like aqua hire type situations. Uh, so we decided to pursue those, um, and then we were kind of right on the finish line with one of them, and and it fell apart. Um, so you know the bank account was basically zero. We had about a thousand dollars in the account, yep. um, and the deal fell apart. So we were really forced to say, "Are we well, shutting down?" What was revenue, company? by the way, at that time? Uh, it was maybe one hundred fifty thousand. A year? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Okay, so then the pivot, right? So uh, you, obviously you pivot to, to what you're doing today, Privy. Um, that was in, you said, 2016. Did you keep the same cap table or did you restart totally? Uh, we actually kept the entire, you know, the cap table as is. Okay, so do you have investors? And if so, how much have you raised across both companies? Across both efforts, uh, we've raised four million to date. Okay, yeah, because just to be clear, people that put in money back in, but like before 2015, they're still on your cap table, right? 
Yeah. 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 Does it, does that ever eat you up inside? You're going, Oh man, they bet on me for like a whole different idea. And like, I could own like a hundred percent of this company if I just started from scratch. But like, you know, obviously you want to do good by your investors. Do you, how, how do you manage that in your head? Yeah. I mean, we were like the structure of our rounds has been very much seed and angel focused. So a lot of the people that came in originally were the people that came back in, uh, the second time around. Um, some of those are, you know, very close friends. Some of them are just awesome, hugely supportive investors. Um, and they've been relatively hands off. So, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I have had some of those thoughts, but, um, you know, at the core, you know, it's still the same brand. It's still the same kind of handful of people that, still that you. are in place. Exactly. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, what are you at today in terms of total customers? Um, paying customers yeah. were about to cross 5,000. Oh, great. Okay, good. Yeah, um, you're, you're, I can tell you're reading off a sheet. What other data do you have for me? <laughs> um, so, uh, what do you, what do you want to know? Well, I was going to say you, you have it there. I might as well just let you say whatever you have in front of you. And then if I have if I'm curious about something else, I'll ask it. Yeah. So we have over a hundred thousand active users, about 5,000 of those are paying customers. Um, and today we're at 3.1 million ARR. Yeah. I was going to say at a minimum 5,000 times that $50 price point obviously puts you at about 3 million in ARR, but I know you have some of those on the, on the new plan, which is 300 ish. Exactly. Where yeah. were you a year ago? Uh, a year ago, uh, 1.3 million ARR in June. Okay. So call it, what is that? About a hundred grand ish, something like that. And in, in monthly, so you've more than doubled year over year. Yeah, exactly. Yep, that's great. I mean, look, that's healthy growth. Where's most of the growth coming from? Um, the, I mean, honestly, we do we do a lot of integrations with kind of different storefront platforms like Shopify, uh, Wix, Weebly, you name it. And then on the ESP side as well, we really sit between those two core uh, things in the stack. So uh, we integrate. There's a clear value prop, and then you know we work on BD for distribution. Um, with, with each of those partners. So most of it comes through this marketplace freemium distribution model that we have. I bet I'm going to ask you to pick a baby. W which of these channels drives you the most new customers? Shopify. Right, not, you didn't even hesitate. I mean, for sure, you know, that it's kind of like a rocket ship over there. And we've, we're the number one app in that ecosystem. Which for, is what, a high for what category? Like what search term? Uh, we're the number one app in marketing, uh, but I think we're also like the number two app in the entire app store, um, depending on the day. So that drives a, a ton of demand. Um, it's taken a lot of hard work to, to figure that out and to get there. But um, a great product that adds value quickly, even for free users, is kind of at the forefront of that. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at this now. So if you have 15,478 reviews in, on Shopify, that doesn't happen by accident. You've done something on your onboarding flows or something that says, hey, don't forget to rate us on Shopify. Walk me through what that process is like. Yeah, for sure. So we do onboarding. You know, you owe off your Shopify or Weebly account or any one of those. Um, we walk you through setting up your first campaign. Um, and then, you know, because it's a free product, uh, after a series of kind of onboarding steps, you'll be prompted to say, hey, if, you know, if you're seeing value out of this product and you like our support, we'd appreciate a review. Um, and you don't have to do that. It's not required, but we certainly see a lot of people doing that. I, okay. I want, I want to make sure though I capture all your genius here because you've done something with the verbiage on that ask where, a, a, a significant portion of people have actually went and left the review. You're making people feel guilty or there's some incentive. What carrot and what stick? Like, what is the actual verbiage there? Do you know? Um, or is it really I just, just you just threw no, something no. up and it works? It's, it's, you're not allowed to actually incentivize reviews. So we, I think a lot of like other vendors in the ecosystem kind of try to see what we're doing there that's special, but there's no, there's no silver bullet. I mean, the reality is we have, a team of live chat support reps that support even our free users. Um, do you ask at the like, end of each, of each support chat? Hey, if you enjoyed it, go leave a review. Nope. Okay. Just purely in some of the onboarding emails based on success metrics, but we've never like AB tested it. We've put way less of a focus on that than, making sure that merchants are successful. All right, well, look, Matt Russell optimized everything at T-Sheets to be number one in the Intuit App Exchange, grew it to about, you know, 30 million in ARR, then flipped it for about 10X to Brad a couple of months ago. There is definitely an exit strategy when you can basically, you know, monopolize a distribution channel in somebody else's app store. So the beg begs the question, why haven't you sold to Shopify for like 25 million bucks? 
<laughs> I mean, we're super stoked, honestly. Like, at, we see a very clear path from four to eight to 10 next year. Um, you know, we're doing a lot around platform expansion on our end. Um, you know, because of our position in that app stores and others, there's a ton of sites that are actually adopting Privy even before they have anything like MailChimp in place. Uh, so we're rolling out some additional use cases and automation there. Like, we're, we're really not thinking about selling the business at this point. Obviously, we dream of that someday. But when you have your eyes set on kind of the next big milestone and you know exactly how to get there, you have the money to do it and the team, you know, why would you kind of get distracted with anything else? Yeah. And just to be clear, too, the reason you mentioned MailChimp, you're essentially you're essentially like life cycle related emails for e-commerce brands, correct? Um, that's not our our roots are really just sitting on top of your site and helping you convert people oh. through like ex- exit intent offers. Okay. Um, but we have found that because of our position and the brand and the support, a lot of these sites are adopting Privy before they have something like that in place. So we are rolling out some of those simple uh, use cases that you would need around e-commerce automation, like uh, abandoned card emails, post-purchase emails, win back, stuff like that, that is just kind of what a small e-commerce merchant needs all in one friendly you know, greatly supported interface. Well, I'm curious how you manage the leverage that they have over you or you have over them. And let me be specific what I mean by that, because it is a very real thing. So if you look at Salesforce for a second, Cirrus Insights, Brand and Bruce came on the show and said, our number one channel by far are the leads we're getting from Salesforce. They were number one in the app exchange. They didn't want to sell to Salesforce. So Salesforce went and bought Relate IQ. Relate IQ is now number one because it's owned by Salesforce. And guess who's not in the app store at all anymore? Serious insights, right? So how do you balance this very delicate game you're playing? For example, let's assume Shopify decides it wants to get in this space. You don't want to sell. How do you manage the potential repercussions of that? Should they buy somebody else? Yeah, I mean, look, we're always open to the conversation. Um, there, he, that, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the reality is there's already a lot of players in the Shopify ecosystem, mm-hmm. right? And even in examples where they don't uh, own any though, right? Uh, not any of our competitors or potential competitors. Um, but we have seen that in the past Shopify has made some acquisitions around other categories. Um, and certainly, you know, they put some more emphasis behind marketing that, uh, versus some of the others, but they're, they're not like ripping out, uh, in the same way that we've seen that happen and inside other kind of platform plays. Um, but look, I mean, Shopify is, is one of our best channels. It's not the only channel. Um, and so part of it for this year is going deeper within that ecosystem, but also expanding into other ecosystems where we're adding a lot of value that are also growing quickly. Yep. No, I remember I had the kit guys on my show. And then before I know it, three months later, after they come on the show and share all their numbers, Shopify is acquiring them. And now I see them even, you know, prominently placed at the top of the marketing ecosystem in their app store, even though they only have 948 reviews. And there's many below them that have thousands and thousands of reviews for maybe you could argue the same ish thing. So there's definitely a premium placement thing, but they do a good job at labeling made by Shopify. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. Okay. It's very, a great company, by the way. They, I, I totally agree with you. Um, talk to me real quick about churn. What's your churn today and how do you manage it? Yeah. So obviously within the long tail of SMB, we've got challenges around sites going out of business. Um, today at a gross level, we're kind of around uh, between three and four. Uh, but as we've expanded- That's churn or revenue? Revenue, MRR. MR. Got it. Gross um, revenue. But on an, on a net basis, it's actually trending trending close to negative, zero and negative, um, with some of the upsell stuff we have going on and expansion through uh, the platform expansion. So if you extrapolate your, your today's numbers and you looked at forward-looking net revenue retention, are you above 100%? Um, yes. We oh, that's great. That's great. And where is most of the expansion happening? Is it just no, like number of site visits, number of SKUs, number of emails collected? Yeah, so... Um, for one, at kind of the mid-market level, tra- site traffic is a big lever for us. Um, our self-serve plan caps out at uh, 250,000 visits per month. Uh, so if you're kind of approaching that or above, then you'll hear from a, a member of our team. Certainly, as we roll out more on the, the email side and the automation side, uh, a contact base uh, lever as well is being introduced. I can imagine people watching this on YouTube are, are going to want me to ask this. Are you standing in your shower right now? <laughs> no, we have like these little phone booths in our office. Oh. Uh, 
and they have little curtains on them. <laughs> Very. Is the curtain made it look like you like I was on like the soap part of the shower, <laughs> the computer resting, <laughs> looking up. Hey okay, guys, that's hilarious. There you guys go. Just so a if phone you're, booth. I was like, just a phone booth. Okay, last few economics questions here. CAC, what are you paying to acquire these things? Um, so we actually don't do any paid marketing. Okay. Um, so you know, uh, based on the channel, it kind of depends. Obviously, if if it's an inside sales person here reaching out to one of our users there's cost there um yeah give me like fully weighted uh cost to acquire yeah fully weighted though like ignore if you don't spend anything on digital you obviously have a team focused on sales or maybe content team etc um i we actually don't even look at it frankly. okay yeah okay so, so it's you're you're growing you're you just know it's it's so obvious it's working you don't measure it actively yes in terms of of CAC. Now that we're growing an inside sales team, we look at that a little bit differently in terms of how long to pay back. Yep. Um, and we're seeing, you know, between two and three months basically. Oh, I mean, well, that's still extremely good. I mean, a lot of SaaS companies are, you know, 12, 14 months. Yeah. I mean, our, our sales cycles are short because these are product qualified users. They already trust the brand and we're kind of educating and expanding. Um, so it's a, it's a, highly transactional process. Yeah. I mean, that, look, if you've got, you're spending, you know, two to three months of, of, of kind of revenue on acquisition and they're paying 50 bucks a month. I mean, you're talking a hundred, 150 bucks to acquire a customer worst case. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, t- uh, you said your team's 20. Where's everyone based? We're all here in Boston. Oh, great. Which part? Like Cambridge area or downtown or what? No, nah, downtown. You like Yvonne's? <laughs> yeah, that's a good spot. I freaking, <laughs> my freaking go-to man. Oh, really? The way, gotta, they, the way they brought that bar down from New York. I mean, just it's just like, oh, gorgeous. Oh, I didn't know it was in New York. Yeah, that bar that they've got in Yvonne's, they shipped that thing down and stored it until they got the lease there on Milk Street. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, expensive, but worth it. Yeah, we're right right around the corner pretty much. Very good. All right, Ben, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Ooh, uh, Hug Your Haters, Jay Bear. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Toby Lukey, Shopify. Yep. Uh, number three, and you swear you're not in acquisition talks with him right now? <laughs> swear. He doesn't even know who we are. <laughs> All right. Number number three, I don't believe that. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your business besides your own? Oh, good question. Um, intercom. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Seven. Okay, that's good. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? Married with an awesome wife and a two-year-old daughter. Oh, wow. Okay, so one kiddo. And how old are you, Ben? Uh, 32. 32. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Ooh, stop uh, focusing on trying to raise money and spend more time with your customers. Guys, there you have it. Stop spending time raising money. The best investors are your customers. Spend time with them. Launched the company after a pivot really in 2015, really focused on helping e-commerce brands build their email list. And then once obviously they're helping you manage all these emails and these leads, they're doing a lot of lifecycle emailing related things today. Ranked very high in the app store at Shopify. That's a core strategy of theirs across many other partners as well. They now have over 5,000 paying customers, paying a minimum of 50 bucks a month. So 250 grand in monthly recurring revenue. That's up more than double year over year. They're doing about 100 grand per month back in June 2017. 4 million raise, 3% gross revenue churn uh, per month. They're above uh, 100% net revenue retention annually to date with about $100 CAC, two to three month payback. And that's just, that's only on select cases where they're actually spending money growing. Their team of 20 is all based up there in Boston. Ben, thank you for taking us to the top. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Really appreciate it.